possible to live comfortably, wouldn't you do it? Hi, this is Chuck Zada from the Armstrong Advisory Group. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, nearly 50 million Americans quit their jobs in the past two years. The COVID-19 pandemic continues to create significant challenges for the current workplace, and if you're thinking about retiring, we may be able to help. Visit armstrongadvisory.com today and sign up for a free, no-obligation consultation. Simply click on the Get Started button on our homepage, and you can pick the date and time you'd want for your initial meeting. If you have questions about the right time to retire, let us help you build an action plan designed to meet your financial needs and address questions that you may have about your portfolio strategy. That's armstrongadvisory.com. Click the Get Started button and request your free consultation today. The proceeding was paid for by Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor. Nothing in the ad or in any Armstrong guide is specific financial, legal, or tax advice. Consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong may contact you to offer investment advisory services. My name is Dottie. This is my VA story. My father served in World War II. He was my hero. As he got older, he needed more help. VA New England Healthcare was there for him and our family every step of the way. VA New England Healthcare offers unlimited healthcare options. The best part? It never cost our family a single penny. As a veteran, my father deserved the best, and so does a veteran in your life. My name is Dottie, and I choose VA. For more information, call 1-844-VA-CARES or visit vacares.us. Leaving your primary home to your children to protect it from the nursing home can create huge capital gains tax issues if they sell it. Call Cushing and Dolan today at 866-848-5699 and get their new free guide called Real Estate, Who Owns It and How It's Protected. Keep your home away from your children's creditors and safe from the nursing home. Call 866-848-5699 or request it online at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Armstrong do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. Hi, this is Chuck and Mike from the Armstrong Advisory Group, and we have a guide out this month on financial planning at tax time. Mike, when we look at trying to get your taxes in order, one of the things that comes up is... IRA and Roth IRA contributions for a prior year. What are the current guidelines on what you can do for 2022? Yeah, it's actually fairly simple. If you're making retirement contributions, you have a deadline of whenever it is you are going to file your taxes to get that money in there. So, you know, I know we all think about April 15th as that tax filing deadline, but maybe you're not prepared to do that and you file an extension. You then have the ability to make that contribution up until you file that tax return for the prior year. In terms of what the limits were for 2022, I believe it was six thousand dollars that you could contribute to each one with an extra thousand if you were over age 50 correct and they those have all increased along with the 401k contributions that is an important differentiator that i'll point out that you know a lot of people are covered by 401k plans you don't have the ability to go in and make prior year contributions to a 401k plan this is exclusive to iras uh maybe a sep ira or a simp uh, you know th- these types of plans that are outside the employer sponsored retirement plan like a 401k. So you know, just something to be aware of. There are all sorts of earnings limits when it comes to contributing to either of those as well. So definitely speak to your tax preparer or CPA. Our guide this month is titled Financial Planning at Tax Time, and there are two ways that you can request it. The first is by calling 800-393-4001. The second is by going to armstrongadvisory.com. Again, that number is 800 393 4001 or go to armstrongadvisory.com. The proceeding was paid for by Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor. Nothing in the ad or in any Armstrong guide is specific financial, legal, or tax advice. Consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong may contact you to offer investment advisory services. In any estate plan, your home is likely your primary asset. Transferring it to your kids is risky, especially if they divorce in the future. You may have to buy back your own home just to protect it from creditors. Get Cushing & Dolan's new guide called Real Estate, Who Owns It, and How It's Protected by calling 866-848-5699. That's 866-848-5699 or request it online at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Armstrong do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. The Financial Exchange is produced by Money Matters Radio and is hosted by employees of the Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor that provides investment advisory services. All opinions expressed are solely those of the hosts, do not reflect the opinions of Armstrong Advisory or anyone else, and do not guarantee profit. Investments can lose money. This program does not offer any specific financial or investment advice. Please consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong and Money Matters Radio do not compensate each other for referrals and are not affiliated. 
This is the Financial Exchange with Chuck Zada and Mike Armstrong. Your exclusive look at business and financial news affecting your day, your city, your world. Stay informed and up to date about economic and market trends. Plus, breaking business news every day. This is the Financial Exchange with Chuck Zada and Mike Armstrong. It's actually Chuck Zada and Brendan Hayes with you today, and we kick things off with some further information that we are continuing to learn about the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. Yesterday, you had a number of people from the Federal Reserve in front of the Senate Banking Committee, and the Senate Banking Committee was very angry at the <laughs> Federal Reserve. They were so angry at that Federal Reserve. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, you've been they, a bad Federal Reserve. Tons of blame on them when you know they attempted somewhat to address it with the bank. Maybe they weren't stern enough, and then they brought up this idea that you know you should have you should have made uh, facilitated the sale of the bank before the collapse. Like you know they were already working with them. Now I'm not trying to defend them too much, but you know the role of regulators is can be limited or can be more aggressive, right? I mean, they don't have to always be on the aggressive. They're, they want to make sure that commerce is continuing to take place. Yeah, everyone always calls for more regulation after something goes wrong. <laughs> right. Where, where were the calls for this before it went wrong? Yeah. You didn't hear peep. You heard deregulation, you know, didn't hear how many thing. years ago, right? So, didn't hear a thing. So, yes, I, I, I do blame the especially the San Francisco branch of the Federal Reserve, who were directly supervising Silicon Valley Bank. They were the, you know, the, the regulator directly in charge of them. So, yes, there, there's blame to, to go around there. But, I mean, when you have the, the Senate Banking Committee saying, oh, why didn't you do anything? I, I look at the Senate Banking Committee, I'm like, why don't you guys do anything? You can pass <laughs> rules, too. Right. Okay, I mean, you're just trying to get everyone off your back. So, I, I just, I, the, the grandstanding in here aside... There is a, a valid point that, hey, the, clearly the regulation that you did have in place was not adequate to prevent this. And I, I think it's worth asking why, but not just saying, you know, shame on you. Sh oh, OK, like, let's let's move past that. I think one one rule which baffles me or not a rule that's in place, but one that they should have is you should actually be required to have a chief risk officer <laughs> like the idea that they didn't have this chief risk officer role filled for that extended period of how time. long was it oh geez I, it was it, it like was a, north of a year it I was believe. like 13 months or 16 months it was it was a long time in my opinion yeah you would <laughs> it would seem to me that in general the anyone in the c-suite you have to have those roles filled call it within four weeks or something like that and if someone won't take the job, hey, maybe that's, that's a sign a, there's a problem. That's a problem. Maybe there's right. a sign. Maybe that's a sign there's a problem there. Mm -hmm. If someone won't take the job, I did think. Okay, and this was one of the fascinating things that came out of yesterday's testimony. Uh, this from Michael Barr, the Fed's vice chairman for banking supervision. So we knew that on the 9th of March. Silicon Valley Bank had $42 billion in deposit withdrawal requests. Which everyone thought was a lot, and it was. It was. It was almost a quarter <laughs> of the bank's deposits. Right. Barr comes out yesterday and says, hey, we think that there were somewhere in the neighborhood of $100 billion of withdrawal requests that would have gone through on Friday, which to put this in perspective, in a bank with $175 billion in deposits, if you have $142 billion leave... That's 80% of the bank <laughs> assets in two days. <laughs> right. That doesn't happen in no, banks. Yeah, there's, there's a banks reason why banks are not required to hold 80% of, you know, deposits, you know, on hand at any point in time. It's because, quite literally, you've never seen anything close to that. Yeah, I mean, you just think about the, the structure that a bank would have to have to try and fulfill that like they, they just have to have vaults full of like gold it, it would be they don't lend money out they just have vaults Scrooge of gold McDuck just hanging out just there throw gold coins out the window as people want their uh withdrawals which if if you do that it basically gets rid of the 
credit creation that allows for entrepreneurship in the United States. I hear people talk about, well, you should just get rid of fractional reserve banking. Okay, if you're a small business and you want to grow, where are you going to get the money from? Because it won't be the bank then. Yeah, sometimes it'll, it'll be it'll be a loan shark, and good luck with that. <laughs> yeah, sometimes people forget kind of the role of the bank. It's not just for you to put your money in and get interest and return. It's for them to facilitate no, if, the movement of he, money in the economy. Here's the deal: if if you want to have a bank and not allow for fractional reserve banking, in which the bank then goes and lends out said money into the community or into wherever the heck they they put it, then you will have no not only no interest earned. But you will have to pay the bank to do so because if they can't make money through lending out money, the only way they can make it is by charging, charging you. you right. <laughs> so that's what a bank becomes. If you if you say, "Well, we got to get rid of fractional reserve banking," okay, how much you want to pay for your checking account a month? Two hundred bucks, three hundred bucks, four hundred bucks. Right. Nope. I'll just hold cash. It's, thank you. It, it, it's not free for them to just you know think about all the overhead associated with the bank. There's mm -hmm. a lot that goes into it. Mm -hmm. So. Yes, there are problems, but the idea is, hey, what went wrong and how do we prevent this from happening in the future? You, you know, one big one that comes to mind for me is this idea that FDIC is still at 250000 Like, it's it's been there for how long now? And, you know, if you look at the money supply, you look at the development of wealth, two fifty now isn't what it was 10 years ago, isn't what it was 20 years ago. No, but there are also ways to manage that if you're a corporate treasurer. Well, that's true. For example, but, but if, if you have, okay, and there are plenty of banks that offer these services, if you have what's called a bank deposit sweep program, mm -hmm. what that does, that sweep, what it means is every night the bank goes out, and even if you have 250 in said bank, they sweep it out to other banks so that you have no more than 250 in any particular right. bank, and they charge you for that. They, they charge a fee sure. in order to facilitate that. There are things that, you know, you can do in terms of, okay, you know, do as a treasurer of a company, do I put my money into short-term U.S. treasuries mm -hmm. because I know the U.S. government's going to pay its bills? I mean, I, I, I don't like the idea that we need to have an unlimited guarantee. No, on no, FDA. I'm thinking like just maybe have it like uh, linked to inflation in some way or linked to the money supply, something along those lines. But to keep it at 250 for 10 years without moving it, I just feel like that kind of creates problems in and of itself. Well, the, the other one that I, I think makes sense is, OK, if you have a bank account that is non-interest bearing, just a checking account. OK. Okay, and, and you could even say it has to be a business checking account or whatever the heck you want to call it. If you've got a non-interest bearing account, then the FDIC limit can be up to $5 million, but the bank's required to keep that invested in short-term securities. They can't go out and lend it long-term. Hmm. Okay, that's one thing. That limits the risk to the bank. It limits the actual cost to the FDIC because hmm. it... it, it you're in effect getting rid of fractional reserve banking for those you know large non-interest bearing accounts then mm -hmm. up to okay, call it five million dollars mm -hmm. that covers you know the operating expenses of any small business by any stretch of the imagination yeah it's a good idea I don't I have zero idea uh, because I'm not into r r managing banks how that's gonna help them or hurt them or you know, whether or not it's going to do what it's intended to do. So so the the other thing on this, and there's a piece from the New York Times, Silicon Valley bank hearing takeaways, a blame game but few solutions. Ultimately, there's one group that is to blame more than anyone else, and that is Silicon Valley Bank. Yeah. There's a reason why, out of the 4,000-some-odd banks in the country, they were the first to go under. <laughs> right. They were poorly run, <laughs> right. and, and especially with regards to the specific situation they have now. There's a reason why there have only been one and a half other banks that have had similar issues. Signature right. Bank, which was you know taken into receivership the same weekend, and First Republic, which is flying you know by the seat of its pants, but right. still here. So and, and Signature, they were doing crypto too, right? Same so, ecosystem. I mean, like, come on. So when, when I look at this and hear, oh, well, who's to blame? There's a reason why you did not have 4,000 banks go under <laughs> in two days. Right. It was not a systemic problem. It was a SVB problem. SVB is first and foremost, top of the list. Yep. Okay. If you want to, my, my personal next group on the list is all the VCs that tried to pull $142 billion out. In, here's what I get to on this. So Silicon Valley Bank 
is your bank. Mm-hmm. And you have $142 billion in there as venture capitalists. Mm-hmm. And you say, they, Silicon Valley Bank puts out on Wednesday, hey guys, we're trying to raise a billion and a half dollars. Can you help us? Now, if, if they went to Brendan Hayes, you'd say, no, I, I, I can't do that. But these are venture capitalists. Mm-hmm. During a capital raise, I would expect the venture capitalists to be able to contribute capital to said capital raise <laughs> of the bank that has been their lifeblood for the last 40 years. Instead, they said, peace. They said, it's not a wonderful life. See you later. They said, bye. <laughs> later. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's like if you were part of this big, you know, kind of, I mean, I mean they're just, they're not, a un- they're not a union, they're not a conglomerate, but they're, you know, a, a community, right? So they are a community of themselves. Everyone knows everyone. Like, th- they should have supported each other. They should have because they know that that bank has been the facilitator, has been the lifeline for that community. And instead, they said, I'm going to look out for my own tail. See you later. And now they're sitting there They're like, oh, where are we going to go now that we can't bank here anymore? Well, that's your problem. You you guys made this happen. (laughs) You tried to pull 75 percent of your deposits out in the span of a day and a half. (laughs) What did you think was going to happen? They not teach that in VC 101. Right. Guess you got to get to 201 in order to learn about how bank runs work. (laughs) And then I, I put the local overseers of the uh, the of Silicon Valley Bank, you know, the the San Francisco Fed. I put them up there as well in terms of, yeah, they they dropped the ball too. But look, there is no bank in the country that can survive seventy five percent of its deposits leaving in a day and a half. Exactly, it's not possible. But the reality is, they did a terrible job of positioning their assets. You know, kind of the, the writing was on the wall that interest rates were going up to to have so much in just those long term bonds and to not hedge it, it was in any no way. Hedge. It, was it was really not. They weren't, you know, laddered. I mean, geez, they have they have folks that are deposit, you know, put depositors that are coming in and they're laddering their CDs. You'd think that maybe they could do a little laddering of their own. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, I want to talk a little bit about U.S. Treasuries right after this. The banking crisis continues to rattle Wall Street. Get the latest information right here on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. With tax season well underway, now's a great time to review your financial planning as it relates to tax decisions you made last year and might want to change this year. Hi, this is Mike Armstrong from the Armstrong Advisory Group. Our new guide is called Financial Planning for Tax Time, and in it, we will look at important topics that may help you moving forward. We all like tax refunds, but if your refund is larger than you expect, you may choose to reduce your tax withholdings in certain areas. Reviewing your RMDs for 2023 is another matter that may be worth addressing. There are new rules for RMDs this year, and our new guide can help provide some understanding of how they may affect you. Call us today at 800-393-4001 and request our new guide called Financial Planning for Tax Time. Again, that number is 800-393-4001 or you can request it online at armstrongadvisory.com. The proceeding was paid for by Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor. Nothing in the ad or in any Armstrong guide is specific financial, legal, or tax advice. Consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong may contact you to offer investment advisory services. If you could retire early and know that you'd be able to live comfortably, wouldn't you do it? Hi, this is Chuck Zada from the Armstrong Advisory Group. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, nearly 50 million Americans quit their jobs in the past two years. The COVID-19 pandemic continues to create significant challenges for the current workplace, and if you're thinking about retiring, we may be able to help. Visit armstrongadvisory.com today and sign up for a free, no-obligation consultation. Simply click on the Get Started button on our homepage, and you can pick the date and time you'd want for your initial meeting. If you have questions about the right time to retire, let us help you build an action plan designed to meet your financial needs and address questions that you may have about your portfolio strategy. That's armstrongadvisory.com. Click the Get Started button and request your free consultation today. The proceeding was paid for by Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor. Nothing in the ad or in any Armstrong guide is specific financial, legal, or tax advice. Consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong may contact you to offer investment advisory services. This is Tucker Silva, and I'm joined today by estate planning attorney Todd Lutzke from the law firm of Cushing & Dolan with your financial exchange quick legal tip of the day. And today, we're talking about the different ways you can own real estate. Todd, 
What are the implications of transferring your home to your children in order to protect it from the nursing home? I always start off by saying nothing good comes from transferring your house to your children. So right off the bat, folks, please just don't do it. So that's my carte blanche answer. But let me give you a little more detail. Why don't we want to do it? Well, I don't own it anymore. If I don't own it anymore, I guess I can get kicked out of my house by my children. Well, I don't like that idea. What if I want to sell it in the future? Well, now I can't sell it because I need their permission to sell it. Well, if we do sell it, where's all the money go? goes to the kids since they own it. Well, that means they got an early inheritance. I guess so. Well, now I don't have the money I need to buy my other house that I want to buy because I'm downsizing. You know, when you get older, you downsize. Now I've lost that ability to do that. But if they're nice enough and they give it all back to me, now I can do it, but they might have a gift tax. Plus, they have adverse income taxes. Folks, I could go on. I hope I've said enough. It's exposed to their creditors. Don't give away your house to protect it from the nursing home. Set up trust. Learn how to plan better than that. Learn the best way to own and protect your home, your vacation home, or your rental property. Call for Cushing & Dolan's brand new guide, Real Estate, Who Owns It and How It's Protected. 866-848-5699. Or you can request it from their website at LegalExchangeShow.com. Once again, the phone number, 866-848-5699. Or you can request it at their website, LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for, and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Armstrong do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. Wall Street's volatility continues as the threat of a recession lingers. Breaking business news all morning long, only here on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. This segment of the Financial Exchange is brought to you in part by the U.S. Virgin Islands Department of Tourism. St. Croix, St. Thomas, and St. John were named the best Caribbean islands to visit for 2023 by the Caribbean Journal. So act now and fall naturally in rhythm with the heartbeat of the islands as you enjoy some of the most pristine beaches in the world along with world-class culinary cuisine. Visit usvi.com right now and book your next vacation today. That's visit usvi.com. There's a headline in the Bloomberg today that says SVB's collapse shows the world's favorite safe asset isn't risk free. <laughs> the subheadline US Treasuries came back to haunt investors and bankers who ignored the basics of interest rate risk. Okay. So let's dispense with this before we go any further. There is no investment in the world that is risk free. Sure. Every investment has some kind of risk attached to it. Mm hmm. It's just a matter of what kind it is. Yeah, what level of risk. Even a bank account. What risks do you have in a bank account? Okay, just off the top of my head, hey, you have the risk that you're going to earn nothing while other stuff is making a whole bunch of money. You've got inflation mm -hmm. risk. You've got the risk that, and again, it hasn't happened in 100 years, but you've got the risk that, in theory, the FDIC, you know, can't pay for... Again, I'm just throwing stuff out there. You've got... You know, instant liquidity risk. If the bank ATM runs out of money, you can't get your money that day. It, it, there, there's, they're dumb risks. They might be small in the broad scheme of things, but everything has risk. It's not just, you know, cryptocurrency that has risk attached to it. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about the idea of, quote, a risk free asset, and when we typically talk about risk free rates, we're referring to U.S. Treasury rates. Right. The fact that people are now saying, oh, well, U.S. Treasuries are not risk-free, it's, it's not referring to what the price you get is. It never has referred to the price you get on any day. It's saying, hey, because the U.S. government always pays its debts, if you buy a U.S. Treasury at yield X and you hold it to the end, that's the rate of return that you're going to earn that's on. That's right. You know exactly what you're going to get if you buy a bond that's going to mature in 10 years you see your yield to worst or yield to maturity, that is what you will earn when you buy that bond if you hold it to maturity, that being the key point. So it really bothers me when people look at this Silicon Valley Bank situation and are like, oh, see, there is risk in U.S. Treasuries. Look what can happen. Gu guys, this has been how the bond market has worked forever. <laughs> it's the, the fact to duration risk or interest rate risk. That's what you're you know, subjecting yourself to. Yes. If you want to say that Silicon Valley Bank handled that incredibly poorly and it directly led to their demise. <laughs> accurate. <laughs> yes. But let's not look at, I, I've seen people referring to U.S. Treasuries as toxic assets. And I'm like, 
<laughs> you're just you're just <laughs> dumb. I'm sorry. That's not what we mean when we say a toxic asset. No. A toxic asset is, hey, I've got a pool of mortgages and I don't know how much they're worth because no one's paying the interest on them. And so they're actually, I think they're worth 80 cents on the dollar, but they're really worth zero. Yeah, and I'm not sure where the market is for them. And, you know, there's some insurance that perhaps was on them, but it really isn't. You know what a toxic asset is? Credit Suisse, with new allegations today that they didn't <laughs> stop uh, the uh, tax evasion that they were assisting U.S. citizens with after uh. a 2014 agreement with the U.S. Treasury. <laughs> That's a toxic <laughs> asset, not knowing what kind of liability you have outstanding there. Uh. Yeah, if you're UBS and you bought it, that could be a toxic asset. Exactly. <laughs> Just okay. like what happened to our couple of our banks here that bought things back in 09. Yeah, you know what was a toxic asset? Wachovia. Because mm. no one knew what the heck it was worth. Yeah. Okay? In this case, we know what U.S. Treasuries are worth. The value of them has gone down over the last year, year and a half, because interest rates have gone up. It has been no secret. It is. Nope. It, it, nope. It's pretty clear, and, and it should have been really clear if you're holding a 30-year bond that you purchased at a really one of our peak lowest. Is, can I use peak as lowest in the same sentence? Peak lowest? You, lowest you, peak. You can. Lowest peak. It, but it wouldn't be a peak. Lowest it, trough. I'll say lowest the, the, trough. The, the bottom is what it's rate. referred to. Oh, the bottom. The bottoming out of interest rates. Thank you, Chuck. I'm a, it's always I'm a, I can always count on Chuck to clarify things for me and educate. I mean, me. we've also coined other terms related to that, where if you have a period, if you have a U-shaped curve, yes, we've referred to the bottom of that as a below toe. A below, okay, yeah. Because you're, you've got your plateau <laughs> above, and then when yeah. you have a long I'm low not, bottom, you've got a below toe. I really don't. I don't want to use that word ever. I'm just not going to use okay. it. That's okay. I'm not going to use it. When you hear Jay Powell saying it five years from now, <laughs> I will give. I will get say, a, I'll get a tattoo of it. If if I hear Jay Powell say it, I will get a tattoo of it. And that does not mean you can directly call him and offer him hundred dollars. He doesn't pick up our phone calls. It. He doesn't. Okay. He doesn't pick I thought up our phone calls. No. Okay. Tuck used to have the speed dial to the Minouche, but I, I don't <laughs> think that's uh, that's working anymore Steven either. Steven Minouche. So lost his digits, man. Yeah, it's uh, Tucker got a new phone and <laughs> just texting out, hey, new phone, who this? <laughs> but uh, anyways, so this idea that, oh, like this shows that treasuries aren't risk free. No, that this shows that the, the bank holding these treasuries had no idea how to manage the asset. Right. And, and they were the they, only, they were they were just dumb in how they managed it. Yeah. The only time you're going to lose on treasuries is if they blow up the United States economy and not raising the debt ceiling and stop paying our our liabilities that's when they come they get into problems Let's take a quick break when we come back it's wall street watch and ask todd Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at TFE Show. Breaking business news is always first right here on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. Evaluating how to smoothly pass along assets to your family is a huge part of a solid estate plan. Your home is most likely your primary asset. And if you think simply transferring it to your kids is the easiest way to go, you'd be taking a major risk, especially if they divorce in the future. Don't put yourself in an awkward position of having to buy back your own home just to protect it from creditors. Get Cushing & Dolan's brand new guide called Real Estate, Who Owns It and How It's Protected by calling 866-848-5699. There are better ways to own your real estate, and this guide will walk you through the process step by step, answer any questions you have, and put you in a more advantageous position to avoid probate down the road. Don't put your home at risk. Call today at 866-848-5699 and ask for your free guide, Real Estate, Who Owns It and How It's Protected. That's 866-848-5699. Or you can request the guide online right now at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Armstrong do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. If you could retire early and know that you'd be able to live comfortably, wouldn't you do it? Hi, this is Chuck Zada from the Armstrong Advisory Group. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, nearly 50 million Americans quit their jobs in the past two years. The COVID-19 pandemic continues to create significant challenges for the current workplace, and if 
if you're thinking about retiring, we may be able to help. Visit armstrongadvisory.com today and sign up for a free, no obligation consultation. Simply click on the Get Started button on our homepage and you can pick the date and time you'd want for your initial meeting. If you have questions about the right time to retire, let us help you build an action plan designed to meet your financial needs and address questions that you may have about your portfolio strategy. That's armstrongadvisory.com. Click the Get Started button and request your free consultation today. The proceeding was paid for by Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor. Nothing in the ad or in any Armstrong guide is specific financial, legal, or tax advice. Consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong may contact you to offer investment advisory services. Spring is here, but it's still cold in New England. So now is the perfect time to head to America's Caribbean paradise, the United States Virgin Islands, consisting of St. Croix, St. Thomas, and St. John. The USVI was recently voted the top Caribbean destination by Travel and Leisure magazine and several other top media organizations, as well as the best Caribbean islands to visit in 2023 by the Caribbean Journal. When you arrive, you'll enjoy some of the most pristine beaches in the world, incredible scuba diving and snorkeling, and world-class culinary offerings. Book your trip today and fall naturally in rhythm with the heartbeat of the islands, where the sun is strong, the clouds are few, and the weather is perfect every day. Travel from New England could not be easier, with no passport required, no money to exchange, and no travel restrictions to enter. Go to visitusvi.com and learn more about America's Caribbean paradise and book a trip today. That's visitusvi.com. My name is Dottie. This is my VA story. My father served in World War II. He was my hero. As he got older, he needed more help. VA New England Healthcare was there for him and our family every step of the way. VA New England Healthcare offers unlimited healthcare options. The best part? It never cost our family a single penny. As a veteran, my father deserved the best, and so does a veteran in your life. My name is Dottie, and I choose VA. For more information, call 1-844-VA-CARES or visit vacares.us. Leaving your primary home to your children to protect it from the nursing home can create Huge capital gains tax issues if they sell it. Call Cushing and Dolan today at 866-848-5699 and get their new free guide called Real Estate, Who Owns It and How It's Protected. Keep your home away from your children's creditors and safe from the nursing home. Call 866-848-5699 or request it online at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Armstrong do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. Planning for your financial future never stops, but there are specific times of the year when it can matter more. Hi, this is Mike Armstrong from the Armstrong Advisory Group. We've put together a brand new guide called Financial Planning for Tax Time that may help you review certain tax decisions that you made last year and whether or not to adjust them in 20. 23. Taking a look at last year's IRA contributions might be a good place to start. Remember that if you're putting money into a traditional or Roth IRA, you have until April 18th to complete your contributions. The IRS limits for these contributions have also increased, which may give you the ability to save more than you have in the past. Call us today at 800-393-4001 and request our new free guide called Financial Planning for Tax Time. That's 800-393-4001 or you can request it online at armstrongadvisory.com. The proceeding was paid for by Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor. Nothing in the ad or in any Armstrong guide is specific financial, legal, or tax advice. Consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong may contact you to offer investment advisory services. Time now for Wall Street Watch. A complete look at what's moving markets so far today, right here on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. The Financial Exchange is proudly partnered with VA New England. If you or a loved one served this country, get the health benefits you earned and deserve. Call 844-VA-CARES. That's 844-VA-CARES. Well, markets are bouncing back in our rally mode today as investors continue to assess a higher interest rate environment while also shelving recent concerns in the banking sector. Right now, the Dow is up by two-thirds of a percent or 207 points. Uh, S&P 500 is up nearly 1% or 38 points, and the NASDAQ is up over 1% now or 136 points. Russell 2000 is also up by 1%. Ten-year Treasury yield, that is up by one basis point, now at 3.58%. And crude oil up by one and a third percent, trading at $74.16 
a barrel. Athleisure wear company Lululemon reported impressive results for the holiday quarter, where consumers were still spending on higher-end yoga pants and other apparel despite elevated prices. The company beat on both adjusted earnings and revenue forecasts, generating $2.77 billion for the quarter compared to $2.13 billion a year ago. Lululemon also provided an upbeat guidance for the new fiscal year. Meanwhile, Micron share, excuse me, Lulu stock is up by 13% on that news. Uh, meanwhile, Micron shares are up by 5% after the chip maker posted a narrower than expected loss for the second quarter, while also saying that AI chip demand is expected to be a secular d- driver of near-term revenue growth. And Macy stock is down by 2% after CEO Jeff Jeanette announced he will retire early next year after four decades with the company. And Bloomberg, or excuse me, Bloomingdale's Tony Spring will take over as CEO next February. I'm Tucker Silva, and that's Wall Street Watch. This is Ask Todd on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. If you have an existing estate plan or are in the market for one, Todd Lutzke is here to answer your questions and help you plan for a later life. Ask Todd is presented by Cushing & Dolan, serving Massachusetts and New England for more than 35 years, helping families with estate and tax planning, Medicaid planning, and probate law. Visit CushingDolan.com. Now, here's Todd Lutzke. And we are joined now by Todd Lutzke from the law firm of Cushing and Dolan for Ask Todd. This is the segment where you get to call in and ask Todd your questions about your estate plan. So get on those phones. Studio line here is 888-205-2263. Again, that is 888-205-2263. We are now joined by Mr. Todd Lutsky. Todd, I, we need you to turn your mic so it's not pointing at me. Oh, my mistake. That being said, how are you? I How's felt that? that? I felt that was rude to not, to it not w- say hi. Uh, well, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm great. Thanks. Now that I know how to hold my mic. I'm struggling a little bit personally. Oh, no. What's going on? I got a, uh, a new part-time job after work as a feather inspector. Oh, yeah? I did. It's got me feeling a little down. Yes, of course it does. <laughs> so, again, if you have a question for Todd Lutsky, the studio line here is 888-205-2263. So we'll open up the phone line so that you can ask Todd your questions about your estate plan. Mr. Lutsky, I want to start first with a question about uh, vacation properties. Sure. Let's say that a family has a vacation property, property and they want to continue to own it and eventually pass it down to their children. Sure. What are the optimal setups for being able to do that and take advantage of the greatest number of benefits possible? So when you have rental property, it's, it's a lot, there's, as you said, Chuck, there's a lot more to think about because rental property involves not even rental, just a vacation home that they use themselves. Oh, I'm sorry. So a vacation home. So even with a vacation home, which may or may not be rented, but if it's a vacation home, you know, it's usually one where they're saying, you know what, I, I want this is a family memories. I want to get it down the road. And they'll say, you know what? I'll just put it in my kid's name now. Well, that's an option, not a good one. But if they did that, you could end up with all kinds of problems uh, from a tax perspective, from a control perspective, from a use perspective, right? So let's talk about the, the better way to do it, right? If I leave it in a trust, I, I wouldn't want to leave it outright to the kids, right? So if I want to all of them to use it. I leave it in a trust, but I put language in there saying that those who want it can have it. The ones who don't want it don't have to have it, but the ones who want it have a right to buy out the interest of the ones who do. This is the first step so that it prevents people from who don't want it and won't care for it and won't pay the bills from letting it be run down. So that's number one. And it prevents fighting amongst the children. So now we got past the fighting part, and let's say they all want it. Okay, now it's in the trust for each of them. You then have language in there that talks about how their buckets have to maintain the property. So now I have some fiduciary obligations to make sure this property is maintained and not run down. Um, And then the other problem you have with it, though, is, you know, use, right? If it's going to be a vacation home and they all want to use it, you know, You can leave it, you know, an option would be to sort of let the kids work it out in terms of how they're going to use the property, who gets it on what, you know, what vacation week or what holiday, 
you know, vacation weekend or something. Or you can lay out a structure, you know, in the trust and draft language about how and when they use it and how they alternate use of certain weekends. You know, it depends on your family. But you need to think about that because that's all important and that has nothing to do with taxes. Also, by doing your planning and holding it in the trust, you might be protecting it so that it, it actually gets to the family. If you just give it to them, not a great way to do it. You get a step up in basis when you die owning it to get capital gains tax treatment. So there's a tax benefit to dying owning it rather than giving it to them while you're living. You can shelter it for estate tax purposes. Folks, so many things to think about when you're dealing with real estate and how to fit it in there. Not just the probate and tax problems, but look at this one. It was all about use and family enjoyment, mm. right? And things you don't think about when you're, when you're thinking about taxes and probate. Speaking with Todd Lutsky from the law firm of Cushing and Dolan, if you have a question for Todd about your estate plan, the studio line here is 888-205-2263. So get call on that number because we're going to take a quick break. But when we return, we're going right to your call. So again, that studio number here is 888-205-2263. A quick break and then right to your calls right after this. Ask Todd with Todd Lutsky every Wednesday at 1030, only here on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. Spring is here, but it's still cold in New England, so now is the perfect time to head to America's Caribbean paradise, the United States Virgin Islands, consisting of St. Croix, St. Thomas, and St. John. The USVI was recently voted the top Caribbean destination by Travel and Leisure magazine and several other top media organizations, as well as the best Caribbean islands to visit in 2023 by the Caribbean Journal. When you arrive, you'll enjoy some of the most pristine beaches in the world, incredible scuba diving and snorkeling, and world-class culinary offerings. Book your trip today and fall naturally in rhythm with the heartbeat of the islands, where the sun is strong, the clouds are few, and the weather is perfect every day. Travel from New England could not be easier, with no passport required, no money to exchange, and no travel restrictions to enter. Go to visitusvi.com and learn more about America's Caribbean paradise and book a trip today. That's visitusvi.com. Evaluating how to smoothly pass along assets to your family is a huge part of a solid estate plan. Your home is most likely your primary asset, and if you think simply transferring it to your kids is the easiest way to go, you'd be taking a major risk, especially if they divorce in the future. Don't put yourself in an awkward position of having to buy back your own home just to protect it from creditors. Get Cushing and Dolan's brand new guide called Real Estate, Who Owns It and How It's Protected by calling 866-848-5699. There are better ways to own your real estate, and this guide will walk you through the process step by step, answer any questions you have, and put you in a more advantageous position to avoid probate down the road. Don't put your home at risk. Call today at 866-848-5699 and ask for your free guide, Real Estate, Who Owns It and How It's Protected. That's 866-848-5699. Or you can request the guide online right now at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Armstrong do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. If you could retire early and know that you'd be able to live comfortably, wouldn't you do it? Hi, this is Chuck Zada from the Armstrong Advisory Group. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, nearly 50 million Americans quit their jobs in the past two years. The COVID-19 pandemic continues to create significant challenges for the current workplace, and if you're thinking about retiring, we may be able to help. Visit armstrongadvisory.com today and sign up for a free, no-obligation consultation. Simply click on the Get Started button on our homepage, and you can pick the date and time you'd want for your initial meeting. If you have questions about the right time to retire, let us help you build an action plan designed to meet your financial needs and address questions that you may have about your portfolio strategy. That's armstrongadvisory.com. Click the Get Started button and request your free consultation today. The proceeding was paid for by Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor. Nothing in the ad or in any Armstrong guide is specific financial, legal, or tax advice. Consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong may contact you to offer investment advisory services. My name is Dottie. This is my VA story. 
My father served in World War II. He was my hero. As he got older, he needed more help. VA New England Healthcare was there for him and our family every step of the way. VA New England Healthcare offers unlimited healthcare options. The best part? It never cost our family a single penny. As a veteran, my father deserved the best, and so does a veteran in your life. My name is Dottie, and I choose VA. For more information, call 1-844-VA-CARES or visit vacares.us. At Office Gallery International, we can help you design the perfect office space. Come visit our state-of-the-art showroom in Norwood, where you'll find a wide variety of products that can help you envision a beautiful and productive workspace. At Office Gallery, we take a high-tech approach to furniture, starting with our designs, and our personal service is second to none. Schedule your free consultation with one of our experts today by visiting us online at officegallery.net. That's officegallery.net. Office Gallery, creating workplace solutions that work. You're listening to Ask Todd with Todd Lutsky on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. We're speaking with Todd Lutsky from the law firm of Cushing and Dolan. If you have a question that you'd like to ask Todd about your estate plan, call the studio right now at 888 205 2263. That number again is 888-205-2263. Todd, we've got a call lined up for you. Let's go to Mark in Boston. You are on with Todd Lutsky. Good morning, Todd. Good morning. I have a question on uh, uh, the life estate of my father. Mm-hmm. He, in 1990, he changed the deed on his two and a half family house in Boston and put my sister's name on it and his name on it, plus a life estate. So, so let's, let's go slow. Let me go Pardon? slow. So he transferred the property 50% to the sister, and he and kept, kept 50%, and he reserved a life estate. Correct. Got it. Go ahead. Okay. And then in 2001, he passed away, and we just found out two months ago, uh, my sister was retiring and selling the house, about the, my father keeping 50% in his name. We always thought the house had been given to my sister back in 1990. Mm-hmm. So now we've got a mess, and we're trying yes. to sell the house. You do have there's a mess. Seven of us. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's seven of us own his 50% of the house, and it had never gone to probate because at the time nobody knew that he had kept the 50% interest. Yeah, yeah, that's a problem. So, uh, so, so now we're trying to figure out the basis. If she sells the house, how the life estate uh, section of the uh, of the deed would affect her basis in our basis, which I assume would be the uh, date of death. The yeah, basis. so the, 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 the problem you have, one, is you are going to – if if the property was owned – you have to a- answer this question. Was that property 50% your sister joint with your dad 50%, or was it tenant in common? I almost can't answer the question without knowing that answer because that makes a huge difference. If it was joint, 50% – sister joint with right of survivorship dad then when dad dies sister automatically gets the property 100 percent, no probate now that's going to make everybody upset in your family but you need to look at the deed and you need to find that answer do you know that answer for for today because they would, they would, went to a lawyer to see about uh, selling the house, and that's when they found out about the fact that my father still has his No, 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 but you, do you know the answer about whether the deed says joint or tenants in common? Uh, no. I saw the deed. It just said, I give to Helen Gaffey and John A. Gaffey, you know. Yeah, but, but if it, you, you're just so the answer is you don't know, and that's okay, but you need to go look at it and see because it says, I give to my sister and joint ownership with him. You got to keep reading it. So if it's joint, then there's the, then the issue is that it went 100% to your sister on the moment of death, no probate, no deed work needed to be prepared, and that's why nothing was done. And now your sister owns the property. Now, if it's tenants in common, then your sister owns half. And the other 50% is going to go according to his will. If his will says, I leave whatever I own equally to my kids, then each one of the kids are going to split 50%. Okay? And your sister is going to be the owner of 50%. So your sister is at least a 50% owner, and you kids could be splitting the other 50%, including your sister, and then, or it could be 100% owned by your sister. But the deed will dictate that. 
So very good to see. And then lastly, the basis question. In this case, <laughs> at least if 50% was left owned by him, even though he had a life estate, he arguably only had a life estate over what he owned. So if he only owned 50%, you're only going to get a half step up in basis on that property. So on the date of his death, there'll be a 50% step up in basis. I don't think you're going to be able to get the full step up because he did give away half. So that will help the basis a little bit. But again, he died in 2001. That property has significantly grown since 2001 to today. So I'm sure there's still going to be a large capital gain there. So Thanks for the call. I, I sure hope that helped. But folks, this is exactly why we have to deal with real estate, how you own it and how to protect it, right? That's our guide. And you should call and get the guide because this is really a disaster, right? You need to figure out the best way to leave assets to your family. And this, not to make fun, but this was not a good way to do it. It created creditor problems. It created tax problems that I see here. It's going to create ownership problems down the road for, for the family as they're running into now. Figure out the best way to have real estate fit into your estate plan and how to leave it so that you get creditor protection, tax benefits, control benefits, etc. Call and get the guide, real estate ownership, how, how you should own it and how to protect it. 866-848-5699. Or go to our website, LegalExchangeShow.com. You can download it there, 866-848-5699 or LegalExchangeShow.com. Todd, I've got another call for you. Let's go to Cheryl in Grafton. You are on with Todd Lutsky. Hi. Um, I have a question regarding long-term care annuities. Okay. Um, you know, for I have a relative who is 82 who was recently... Um, uh, you know, went to a skilled nursing facility okay. for long-term care. Yep. And I wanted some advice on whether that was um, a good um, idea to, I guess, protect some of their assets. Okay. So, so the answer is when you have somebody going to a nursing home, without it sounds like without any planning done in advance, or if planning was done in advance, there's still some assets that are outside of the trust and at risk for the nursing home, or I like to call countable when you're applying for Medicaid eligibility. So what do you do last minute is really the question here, folks. And this is for everybody. So if there's a bunch of assets sitting outside the trust and you have, in this case, a single person going into the nursing home, is there a way to protect or at least slow the financial bleeding of those assets because we're, we want to get on Medicaid rather than pay privately? The answer is yes, there is. And in this case, an annuity might be one. Now, I, I don't know if I heard the age right. 92, if that was the age, then it might be a little high uh, in terms of age to get an annuity. But if it was 82, because I, I my fault in not hearing the age, but um, y you probably have a better shot at using the annuity. What this means is that when you have excess assets over in this case, if you're single, you can only have $2,000. You need to convert all the excess assets over $2,000 into an income stream. And it's that conversion by buying the annuity into an income stream that brings your assets down because it converts that to an income stream and you're left with like $2,000 in your bank account. One thing I want to stress, though, is it sounded like you might have already had an annuity. These are special Medicaid annuities. I'm not giving investment advice here. I'm simply telling you that these kinds of annuities have a lot of rules associated with them, and you need to seek out counsel before you buy this annuity. And if someone is telling you you already have the annuity, a Medicaid annuity, well before someone entered a nursing home, I can tell you that they don't. Okay, you cannot have a Medicaid annuity unless you're already headed in or in the nursing home because they don't, they don't exist. Other kinds of annuities do, but not that one. But this annuity is a great idea if that's your question. Buy the annuity. It converts the money into an income stream, and then you could become eligible for long-term care. But please follow the rules. Mr. Lutsky, thank you for joining us today. Always a pleasure.
The views expressed in this segment are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Armstrong Advisory does not provide any legal or tax advice. Please consult with your legal or tax advisor on such matters. Cushing and Armstrong do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. This has been Ask Todd on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. Ask Todd with Todd Lutzke has been presented by Cushing and Dolan, serving Massachusetts and New England for more than 30 years, helping families with estate and tax planning, Medicaid planning, and probate law. Call 800-393-4001 or visit CushingDolan.com. Com. Evaluating how to smoothly pass along assets to your family is a huge part of a solid estate plan. Your home is most likely your primary asset, and if you think simply transferring it to your kids is the easiest way to go, you'd be taking a major risk, especially if they divorce in the future. Don't put yourself in an awkward position of having to buy back your own home just to protect it from creditors. Get Cushing & Dolan's brand new guide called Real Estate, Who Owns It and How It's Protected by calling 866-848-5699. There are better ways to own your real estate, and this guide will walk you through the process step by step answer any questions you have, and put you in a more advantageous position to avoid probate down the road. Don't put your home at risk. Call today at 866-848-5699 and ask for your free guide, Real Estate, Who Owns It and How It's Protected. That's 866-848-5699, or you can request the guide online right now at LegalExchangeShow.com. Still a lot to come as we get towards the second hour of the financial exchange. We're going to be talking a little bit about the spring housing market. Also, an update from Macy's that I want to get to. And then I also want to talk about the current state of air travel and well, why we're complaining so much about it right now. Is there actually a big problem there? Or are we just getting a little soft when it comes to flying on the big airplane in the sky? Let's take a quick break here. And when we come back for hour two, we've got all those topics and more when we return. For 40 years, Cancer Support Community has been a relentless ally for anyone impacted by cancer with free services provided online and in person with their newest location in Massachusetts. Connect with Cancer Support Community Massachusetts for free emotional support, educational resources, patient navigation, financial counseling, and more. 617-797-3391. CancerSupportMass.org. CancerSupportMass.org. If you could retire early and know that you'd be able to live comfortably, wouldn't you do it? Hi, this is Chuck Zada from the Armstrong Advisory Group. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, nearly 50 million Americans quit their jobs in the past two years. The COVID-19 pandemic continues to create significant challenges for the current workplace, and if you're thinking about retiring, we may be able to help. Visit armstrongadvisory.com today and sign up for a free, no-obligation consultation. Simply click on the Get Started button on our homepage, and you can pick the date and time you'd want for your initial meeting. If you have questions about the right time to retire, let us help you build an action plan designed to meet your financial needs and address questions that you may have about your portfolio strategy. That's armstrongadvisory.com. Click the Get Started button and request your free consultation today. The proceeding was paid for by Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor. Nothing in the ad or in any Armstrong guide is specific financial, legal, or tax advice. Consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong may contact you to offer investment advice Services. This is Tucker Silva of the Financial Exchange, and I'm joined today by estate planning attorney Todd Lutzke from the law firm of Cushing & Dolan with your Financial Exchange quick legal tip of the day. And today we're talking about the different ways you can own your real estate. Todd, what's the best form of ownership for rental property? Well, folks, whenever you own rental property, I'm going to give you two answers. One, put it in an LLC. If you put it in an LLC, you are going to create no adverse income tax consequences for yourself. You may not even need to file a 1065 income tax return for the LLC, provided it's a single member LLC. And even if you did, it's a flow through, so there's no adverse income tax consequences. In addition, why do I do it? Well, if there's a tenant who slips and falls or someone has a party, leaves drunk and gets hurt, they're going to sue you. And if it's in your name, they can sue you personally and go after all your personal assets. If it's in an LLC... 
they can only go after what's in the LLC. So great creditor protection, folks. And for all of you people who don't like living in Massachusetts too much and have moved out of state, maybe as a snowbird or whatnot down to Florida, and you're a non-resident, make sure you put your home in Massachusetts or any real estate in Massachusetts in an LLC to avoid it being taxed in Massachusetts for estate tax purposes. That's just a little tip, folks, but LLCs are the way to go. Learn the best way to own and protect your home, your vacation home, or your rental property. Call for Cushing and Dolan's brand new guide called Real Estate, Who Owns It and How It's Protected. 866-848-5699 or you can request it at their website, legalexchangeshow.com. Once again, the phone number, 866 866- Eight four eight five six nine nine, or simply request it at legalexchangeshow.com. The proceeding was paid for, and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Armstrong do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. This is the Money Matters Radio Network, WBNW eleven twenty AM and W two seven five CM FM, Concord, Boston. The Money Matters Radio Network. Spring is here, but it's still cold in New England, so now's the perfect time to head to America's Caribbean paradise, the United States Virgin Islands, consisting of St. Croix, St. Thomas, and St. John. The USVI was recently voted the top Caribbean destination by Travel and Leisure Magazine and several other top media organizations, as well as the best Caribbean islands to visit in 2023 by the Caribbean Journal. When you arrive, you'll enjoy some of the most pristine beaches in the world, incredible scuba diving and snorkeling, and world-class culinary offerings. Book your trip today and fall naturally in rhythm with the heartbeat of the islands, where the sun is strong, the clouds are few, and the weather is perfect every day. Travel from New England could not be easier, with no passport required, no money to exchange, and no travel restrictions to enter. Go to visitusvi.com and learn more about America's Caribbean paradise and book a trip today. That's visitusvi.com. Hi, this is Chuck and Mike from the Armstrong Advisory Group, and we have a guide out this month titled Financial Planning at Tax Time. Mike, let's say that you're someone who went through a Roth IRA conversion last year, and now you're looking at your tax return for 2022. How do you start to figure out if you should do the same thing in 2023 or change course? Yeah, I mean, first things first, remind yourself of why you did a Roth conversion in the first place, right? I mean, generally speaking, a lot of folks will say that, hey, I'm doing this because I think I'm in a lower tax bracket today than I will be in the future. Well, guess what? You're filing your tax return. Now it's time to prove that out. Did I, in fact, fall into a lower tax or the tax bracket that I thought I would be in, or did I shove myself up into a new one that I wasn't thinking about? It's also important to account for potential income changes in 2023. Is your income moving up or down for any particular reason. Yeah, of course. Did I have some sort of commission that paid out for my work? Did I sell a property that's going to leave me with a capital gain? And by the way, it goes beyond just the income tax brackets too. Maybe you're over the age of 65 and on Medicare. Now I need to be worried about the IRMA brackets and when my additional Medicare premiums might kick in. So there's a lot that goes into this, but now it's tax time. It's a good thing to figure out. By the way, those Roth conversions did need to be done by December 31st, so there's no going back on that piece. It's not like a Roth IRA contribution. So keep that in mind as well. Our guide this month is titled Financial Planning at Tax Time, and there are two ways you can request it. The first is by calling 800-393-4001, and the second is by visiting armstrongadvisory.com. That number again is 800-393-4001, or visit armstrongadvisory.com. The proceeding was paid for by Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor. Nothing in the ad or in any Armstrong guide is specific financial, legal, or tax advice. Consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong may contact you to offer investment advisory services. Evaluating how to smoothly pass along assets to your family is a huge part of a solid estate plan. Your home is most likely your primary asset, and if you think simply transferring it to your kids is the easiest way to go, you'd be taking a major risk, especially if they divorce in the future. Don't put yourself in an awkward position of having to buy back your own home just to protect it from creditors. Get Cushing and Dolan's brand new guide called Real Estate, Who Owns It and How It's Protected by calling 866-848-5699. There are better ways to own your real estate, and this guide will walk you through the process step by step, answer any questions you have, and put you in a more advantageous position to avoid probate down the road. Don't put your home at risk. 
Call today at 866-848-5699 and ask for your free guide, Real Estate, Who Owns It and How It's Protected. That's 866-848-5699. Or you can request the guide online right now at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Armstrong do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. For 40 years, Cancer Support Community has been a relentless ally for anyone impacted by cancer with free services provided online and in person with their newest location in Massachusetts. Connect with Cancer Support Community Massachusetts for free emotional support, educational resources, patient navigation, financial counseling, and more. 617-797-3391. CancerSupportMass.org. CancerSupportMass.org. The Financial Exchange is produced by Money Matters Radio and is hosted by employees of the Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor that provides investment advisory services. All opinions expressed are solely those of the hosts, do not reflect the opinions of Armstrong Advisory or anyone else, and do not guarantee profit. Investments can lose money. This program does not offer any specific financial or investment advice. Please consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong and Money Matters Radio do not compensate each other for referrals and are not affiliated. This is the Financial Exchange with Chuck Zotta and Mike Armstrong. Your exclusive look at business and financial news affecting your day, your city, your world. Stay informed and up-to-date about economic and market trends. Plus, get breaking business news every day. The Financial Exchange is a proud partner of the Disabled American Veterans Department of Massachusetts. You, too, can support our great American heroes by visiting FinancialExchangeShow.com slash DAV. And now, it's time for The Financial Exchange with Chuck Zotta and Mike Armstrong. As we move into the 11 o'clock hour here on The Financial Exchange, markets are in positive territory with the Dow up 173 points. The S&P is up 34, and the NASDAQ up 126, so anywhere from a half a percent to a 1% rally taking place in your broad U.S. indices. 10-year U.S. Treasury not moving very much, right now at 3.55%, down two basis points. We've got oil up 78 cents a barrel to 73.98 currently, and gold is holding relatively steady at 19.88 an ounce, down $2.40. Brendan, we are into the spring housing season right now. It, I, I always say it really kicks off after the Super Bowl. That's sure. where you start to see it, you know, jumping again. But it's not really jumping. It's it's not dead from a pricing perspective. But there's almost there's very little transaction volume happening. Yeah, right. I mean, folks are simply not willing to jump from a home that has a really low mortgage today. Chuck, I think the stat is something like 99% of homes have interest rates on their mortgage less than the current rates, right? Yes. So if you jump from your home, unless you can sell it and just take that money in a cash buy uh, to buy something else, well, you might be be a little hesitant to, to sell and buy and get a new mortgage, right? So that that's certainly something that is on everyone's mind that's considering that sale. Yeah, I mean, look, there, there are a couple possibilities for people that still have higher mortgage rates. First, if you bought last year and you have a mortgage at 7%, I mean, those are, those are people that are higher. But I, I, I'm curious if there's anyone out there who bought a home... Right around the tech bubble, just as an example. Yep. Mortgage rates during the tech bubble were anywhere from about seven and a half to eight and a half percent. Yeah, they were sure. I wonder <laughs> what percentage of people still have that mortgage and never refied over the last twenty well, years for some reason. Well, for the the reason could be if you had some degree of financial hardship, and the banks are unwilling to lend to you. But wouldn't you have lost your house at Not some point? Most likely, right? You could be holding on by the, you know, just by your fingernails yeah. and, you know, unable to do it. It is possible, right? If you had a terrible credit score. I'd like to propose this to the text line. Text us at 617-362-1385. If you have your original mortgage still outstanding from the late 90s or early 2000s, Please text us and let us know what your mortgage rate is. because I, And why I, you still have it. And, and, and yes, I'd, I'd be curious, 
why you may not have refied in the interim mm. when rates were lower for basically that entire 20 year period since. So if you if you took out a mortgage before the Red Sox won the World Series in 2004 and it's still outstanding now, I don't if you took it out in 82 and it's paid off now, different story. Yeah, we don't want to hear about your I don't 18% care. Percent mortgage that it no. was your first home. But purchase. I want to know, hey, if if you had a mortgage that you took out in 95 to 2003, and you still have it outstanding right now, <laughs> I want to hear about why you may not have refinanced it. So text us at 617-362-1385. I'm curious, Chuck, you have your computer open. What, what are uh, uh, arms going for now? Like, I'm, I'm just wondering if we're going to see a little bit of a resurgence. I don't feel like they're really saving it's people It's not attractive much. right now. It's not? Okay. So the 30-year fixed rate, and this is according to Mortgage News Daily, the 30-year fixed rate as of yesterday was averaging 6.6%. Okay. 5-1 arm nationally was averaging 6.6%. Oh, are you kidding me? So, oh, there's no benefit. No benefit there. Oh, wow. Okay, so at least I guess that might be a good thing that we're not going to see this huge resurgence of the adjustable rate mortgages. You've probably seen some because at least for the last six months or so, they haven't matched up quite that way. Right. But I don't think we're getting back to, you know, 40%, 50% of adjustable rates. But what you are seeing, at least on new construction, some of the builders' incentives that I've seen are a little bit dodgy to me. Well, yeah, because they want to present the price of their property as still being high, right? Yeah, well, they, I mean, because, again, they get paid based on the, the price. price. They don't get right. paid on a monthly basis. Right. So what I have seen them doing in some cases is effectively doing rate buy-downs where, hey, if you buy this property here, for the first year, we'll take one percent. We'll pay one percent of your yeah, interest rate. Right. And Locking so I've in. I've seen things like that that make me a little bit nervous, just because. Okay, let's say that you're buying a place and your principal and interest was going to be two thousand dollars, and Toll Brothers or whoever comes in and they say, "Hey, we'll pay one percent of your interest rate." Okay, now your monthly payment is seventeen fifty. Mm-hmm. Well, can you afford? How easily can you afford it at two thousand? Is that seventeen fifty? Is that what gets you to say yes? Let's do it, and then you're you know a little overextended when you get back to paying those normal rates. Yeah, just like folks, you know, prior to 07 should have been vigilant about understanding their own finances, not just allowing the bank or whomever to say, oh, here you can have this, and you simply accept it because they're willing to give it to you. You can't. You have to look at your own finances and make sure you fully understand it. Just some data that I have here from Mike Simonson, who does great weekly data, I think, from Altus Research. Normally, you start to see inventories ticking up in mid-February. That's where the spring inventory build typically happens. Inventories have been falling all spring and still have not started to move up. They were flat over the last week, but still have not moved up. I mean, is that just because they're... When we say inventory, does that mean just houses hitting the market or total available inventory available at any given time? Is that just because they're being just snatched up real quick? I mean, no. So what we're seeing right now in a normal market, and this is again from Mike's data, in a typical normal market, you'll see about 25 percent of homes that are listed and sold within a week. All right. At the peak of the frenzy last spring, Mm -hmm. you were seeing about 35 to 38 percent of homes listed and sold within a week. Within a week, wow. Today, it's only about 21, 22 percent. So it's a little bit below normal. All right, so it's not that. No, it's not that. What it is, is it's just much lower listing levels than, than last year. So right now, this most recent week that he has data for, 68,000 new listings this week. Nationwide, and this is Nationwide, for single family single only. Single family, okay. Last year, the same week, ninety three thousand. Oh, you're kidding me! That is a big drop off. And I went so. Hmm. All right, let's just think about that. Is it? Is there some weather component to it? There's been some pretty nasty storms across the country. Perhaps we could attribute, you know, a lot of rain out there in Cali, and you could um, say that if it were one week. Yeah. But this has been the trend all spring. Okay. You know, this is this has been what we've we've been seeing here. So I, I think that where I come to is, hey, if you have a mortgage in the twos, threes or fours right now and you don't have to move, mm-hmm. the only way is that the only way that you're going to move basically is if you have to move, in my opinion, hey, 
I'm being relocated for work and I need to sell my home. Yeah. Hey, this home was owned by my parents. They both just passed away. We don't want it. And now we're trying to sell it, you know, because we're liquidating the estate. Mm -hmm. Situate. Hey, we have a divorce decree and this property needs to get sold as part of it. You know, those are the cases where I think you're seeing the vast majority of properties being sold right now. Because otherwise, I was talking to a buddy of, of, of mine about this a couple weeks ago. They have a three-bedroom home, and they want to upgrade to a four-bed in town. Yep. They won't list their place because they look at it, he says, I've got a mortgage rate at 3.5%. Yeah, right. If I try to move for one additional bedroom, it's going to cost me an extra 40% on a monthly basis <laughs> to get one additional bedroom. Right. So, no, I'm not going to do that. So, that property doesn't hit the market. Yeah, sure. Got a couple of texts that came in. Oh, what do we got, Tuck? Uh, one out of the 508 said, yes, uh, have mine at 6%. The bank would not refinance me. Mm. Uh, another listener out of the 508 says, uh, I have an adjustable rate mortgage that originated in 2004. The current rate is 6.9%, I believe, hoping to sell this property in mm. about one more year. Mm. Yep. And, and to a certain extent, Look, if you've owned that property for 25 years now, you're into the point where you're also paying mostly principal. Yeah, sure. On your on your yeah, monthly you're payments, six six on, you know, tens of thousands. Right. Of you've dollars. you've done the hard work yeah. at this point. So there's there's also a case where look, if you've got 20 grand left outstanding on it, a bank's not going to refi it at this point because it's not a big enough loan. Yeah, basically on 100 grand, you're not really going to get a refi, nor is, because it's not worth it, right? The cost of refinancing, the yeah. there, there's rules that say, hey, you can't just fleece people. So Let's take a, there's an anti-fleece rule? There is. There's an anti-fleece rule that says you're not allowed to fleece people out of their money. It's a banking, it's a, a standard in the banking industry. Yeah, it's actually titled as such. <laughs> <laughs> Let's <see>. Brennan, <laughs> come on, yes. Tucker. Oh, that hurts. Thank, thank you. I, I, I'm glad we made that clear to all of our <laughs> listeners that there is no anti-fleece legislation out there. <laughs> there is a rule that basically says if you know when you're uh, going to refinance a mortgage or take a mortgage out, the cost of the mortgage can't exceed a certain percent of yeah. what you're doing. Yep. So. It's, I've coined it, the, the anti-fleece anti -fleece rule. rule. All these shepherds listening are very disappointed in you <laughs> right now. A lot of long-haired sheep walking yes. around now. Yes, let's take a quick break, and when we come back, we have trivia, and then we're talking Macy's right after this. Bank stocks remain under pressure following the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. We've got the most up-to-date information every day between 10 and noon, only here on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. At Office Gallery International, we can help you design the perfect office space. Come visit our state-of-the-art showroom in Norwood, where you'll find a wide variety of products that can help you envision a beautiful and productive workspace. At Office Gallery, we take a high-tech approach to furniture, starting with our designs, and our personal service is second to none. Schedule your free consultation with one of our experts today by visiting us online at officegallery.net. That's officegallery.net. Office Gallery, creating workplace solutions that work. Leaving your primary home to your children to protect it from the nursing home can create huge capital gains tax issues if they sell it. Call Cushing & Dolan today at 866-848-5699 and get their new free guide called Real Estate, Who Owns It and How It's Protected. Keep your home away from your children's creditors and safe from the nursing home. Call 866-848-5699 or request it online at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing & Dolan. Cushing & Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing & Armstrong do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. With tax season well underway, now's a great time to review your financial planning as it relates to tax decisions you made last year and might want to change this year. Hi, this is Mike Armstrong from the Armstrong Advisory Group. Our new guide is called Financial Planning for Tax Time, and in it, we will look at important topics that may help you moving forward. We all like tax refunds, but if your refund is larger than you expect, you may choose to reduce your tax withholdings in certain areas. Reviewing your RMDs for 2023 is another matter that may be worth addressing. There are new rules for RMDs this year, and our new guide can help provide some understanding of how they may affect you. Call us today at 800-393-4001 and request our new guide called Financial Planning for Tax Time. Again, that number is 800-393-4001 or you can request it online at armstrongadvisory.com. The proceeding was paid for by Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor. Nothing in the ad or in any Armstrong guide is specific financial, legal, or tax advice. Consult
consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong may contact you to offer investment advisory services. Spring is here, but it's still cold in New England. So now's the perfect time to head to America's Caribbean paradise, the United States Virgin Islands, consisting of St. Croix, St. Thomas, and St. John. The USVI was recently voted the top Caribbean destination by Travel and Leisure magazine and several other top media organizations, as well as the best Caribbean islands to visit in 2023 by the Caribbean Journal. When you arrive, you'll enjoy some of the most pristine beaches in the world, incredible scuba diving and snorkeling, and world-class culinary offerings. Book your trip today and fall naturally in rhythm with the heartbeat of the islands, where the sun is strong, the clouds are few, and the weather is perfect every day. Travel from New England could not be easier, with no passport required, no money to exchange, and no travel restrictions to enter. Go to visitusvi.com and learn more about America's Caribbean paradise and book a trip today. That's visitusvi.com. If you could retire early and know that you'd be able to live comfortably, wouldn't you do it? Hi, this is Chuck Zada from the Armstrong Advisory Group. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, nearly 50 million Americans quit their jobs in the past two years. The COVID-19 pandemic continues to create significant challenges for the current workplace, and if you're thinking about retiring, we may be able to help. Visit armstrongadvisory.com today and sign up for a free, no-obligation consultation. Simply click on the Get Started button on our homepage, and you can pick the date and time you'd want for your initial meeting. If you have questions about the right time to retire, let us help you build an action plan designed to meet your financial needs and address questions that you may have about your portfolio strategy. That's armstrongadvisory.com. Click the Get Started button and request your free consultation today. The proceeding was paid for by Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor. Nothing in the ad or in any Armstrong guide is specific financial, legal, or tax advice. Consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong may contact you to offer investment advisory services. For your chance to win our daily trivia contest, text us at 617-362-1385 and use keyword ENCORE. Complete rules are available at FinancialExchangeShow.com. This is the Financial Exchange Radio Network. Time for trivia here on the Financial Exchange, and it's brought to you by Encore Boston Harbor. Visit EncoreBostonHarbor.com and see for yourself why Encore is a Forbes five-star award winner for both hotel and spa. A little bit of uh, wrestling trivia today, which I think is a first in Financial Exchange show history, but happy to do it. On March 29, 1987, Hulk Hogan defended his World Heavyweight Championship against Andre the Giant in front of 93,000 fans at the Pontiac Silverdome. Despite the loss to Hulk, Andre would go on to have a great year in 87. He would go on to co-star in a major movie that has since gone on to be a cult classic. Our question today, what is the name of the movie Andre starred in that was released in 1987? Pretty easy one here. What is the name of the movie Andre starred in that was released in 1987? Be the eighth person today to text us at 617-362-1385 with the correct answer. And you win a Financial Exchange Show t-shirt and be registered to win a $100 gift card to Encore Boston Harbor. Be sure to include the keyword Encore in your text and we'll give away the Encore gift card on Friday's show. 617-362-1385 and the eighth correct response will be our winner. See complete contest rules at financialexchangeshow.com. Do you know it, Brendan? I I don't like know it, know it, but I think I know it. And, and it's funny because... Do you want to write Tuck, your answer down and Tuck, show me? Tucker said... Because I think I know well, it, Well, I just it. don't know. I don't know if I know the name of I it. I haven't seen the movie, and I know the answer. Really? Really. Chuck, Chuck already cheated and looked it up, so he's going to be my... <laughs> I don't think this is really the name of it, but... What does that say? Time Travelers. <laughs> Did you just say it? Is, is that a movie? <laughs> I love how you wrote it down and then you said it. <laughs> well, hey, I figured I was what? wrong anyway. <laughs> what is he wrote it down and then he said it. <laughs> and he asked me what it said. <laughs> what are we doing? There's I, no way I got it right. I was thinking you'd maybe write it again more clearly, not <laughs> <laughs> write it down. Anyways, let's talk about Macy's. Let's do that. 
Their CEO, Jeff Jeanette, is going to be retiring. He took over as CEO in 2017 after working for a number of years at the company previously. And in his place, Tony Spring from their Bloomingdale or from Bloomingdale's is going to be taking over the reins there. Your thoughts, Brendan? You know, if you think about what they've done, what uh, Jeff Gannett has done, I mean, really, he was able to pull Macy's from the brink, in my opinion. I mean, they had, you know, the likes of Amazon that was just really eaten into that whole clothing segment. You had, you know, activist investors that were pounding at the door to break Sell off it. portions you just want of the, the real company, estate, right? you know? Um, and he, you know, he managed through and, you know, kept that business uh, going. So I'll at least give him credit there. And to the extent that, yeah, their sales were down a little bit in the most recent fiscal year, but the profit doubled. And he, <laughs> again, he's been there, not in the CEO role, but this marks 40 years of him at the company. So he's, he's basically a Macy's lifer. And I, I say this, I, I said this last week, and I mean this as affectionately as possible, like in the nicest possible way. Macy's is the cockroach of the retail sector. What? They won't no. die. Oh, everyone's oh, oh, been oh from that aspect. Yes. Oh, they ev- won't die. Yes. Okay. Everyone's been predicting their doom for years. Yeah. And they, they just keep on living. I, I'm, I'm not saying that they, they infest everything. No, I'm, I'm saying they are, they're, they're hardy. Like they, they've had everyone out there gunning for them mm. for the last decades. As you said, strip the company down, sell it for parts. So mm-hmm. you can't compete in this. You can't compete in that. I've said some of these things. Mm-hmm. And I, they just keep proving people wrong. I, I mean, I, I feel like they, they fill a spot where... They're a little bit higher quality than kind of that low tier uh, store that, you know, you just get, you know, threadbare clothes at these other ones. Yeah, right? they're a niche above, you know, the targets of the world. Yeah, they're definitely above the target, but, you know, they're below. Well, what I didn't, I guess I didn't realize, they own uh, Bloomingdale's. Yes, they're. I, in terms of, and again, I don't really shop at any of these places because I don't. I don't really shop. It's not. I thought I recognized that sweater from uh, Monday. There's. (laughs) Of Monday of 2014. Monday of Monday. (laughs) Yeah. So there's, in terms of the the, the price levels, as far as I can interpret, Mm -hmm. the highest, most expensive one, I think, is Neiman Marcus. I would guess. Yep. And then I think you've got. Nordstrom's. I think Nordstrom and Macy's are on a similar level. Oh, really? Oh, I think Nordstrom's is more expensive. You get your personal I, I, shoppers I don't know. there and all. I think you have those at Macy's, too. You do? I think you can. Oh, well, I'm going there. Which one? I don't know. Which one's open? <laughs> <laughs> let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about GameStop. Yeah, sure thing. They are now hitting the brakes on their e-commerce push, and they are trying to refocus on making their 4,400 stores more profitable. When you say hit the brakes, Chuck, they're actually hitting the brakes so hard that the car spins around in 180 degrees. That's the type of brakes they're hitting. They are. So GameStop did, a week ago, announce that they had their first quarterly profit in two years, but it happened on the on the back of a small revenue decline of 1% year over year. And so... What you do have investors looking at is, okay, it's great that you were profitable, but ultimately cutting costs is not the only strategy, is is not a viable long-term strategy for growth. That's just slowing the melt of your iceberg. How are you actually going to grow? Yeah, I I, I need to go into one of these stores because it's been, my boys have been out of that for quite some time. Um, But I am curious, like, what it would take to make that retail store kind of the one that you want to go to for your video gaming i'm guessing now it's like accessories it's not the the games anymore because the games because they're all downloadable i think i mean i i don't really play much in the way of new video games anymore i think on their latest earnings call they noted that like video games that were down in terms of sales and they actually had pretty decent quarter in terms of hardware and collectibles actually yeah that's what i would think it's the collectibles i would th- you know if i was them i'd probably be into like the the t-shirts and the things that these you know gamers want to buy and kind t-shirts. of be a part of the culture you know t- yeah t-shirts right no t-shirts jeans and slippers <laughs> yeah you got some uh, halo 3 slippers great <laughs> let's take a quick break when we come back we got the trivia answer 
The Financial Exchange is live on Facebook, so make sure to like our page and watch the guys break down the latest on the markets every day beginning at 10 on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. Hi, this is Chuck and Mike from the Armstrong Advisory Group, and we have a guide out this month titled Financial Planning at Tax Time. Mike, let's say that you're someone who went through a Roth IRA conversion last year, and now you're looking at your tax return for 2022. How do you start to figure out if you should do the same thing in 2023? Or change course. Yeah, I mean, first things first, remind yourself of why you did a Roth conversion in the first place, right? I mean, generally speaking, a lot of folks will say that, hey, I'm doing this because I think I'm in a lower tax bracket today than I will be in the future. Well, guess what? You're filing your tax return. Now it's time to prove that out. Did I, in fact, fall into a lower tax or the tax bracket that I thought I would be in? Or did I shove myself up into a new one that I wasn't thinking about? It's also important to account for potential income changes in 2023. Is your income moving up? up or down for any particular reason. Yeah, of course. Did I have some sort of commission that paid out for my work? Did I sell a property that's going to leave me with a capital gain? And by the way, it goes beyond just the income tax brackets too. Maybe you're over the age of 65 and on Medicare. Now I need to be worried about the IRMA brackets and when my additional Medicare premiums might kick in. So there's a lot that goes into this, but now it's tax time. It's a good thing to figure out. By the way, those Roth conversions did need to be done by December 31st, so there's no going back on that piece. It's not like a Roth IRA contribution. So keep that in mind as well. Our guide this month is titled Financial Planning at Tax Time, and there are two ways you can request it. The first is by calling 800 393 4001, and the second is by visiting armstrongadvisory.com. That number again is 800 393 4001, or visit armstrongadvisory.com. The proceeding was paid for by Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor. Nothing in the ad or in any Armstrong guide is specific financial, legal, or tax advice. Consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong may contact you to offer investment advisory services. Spring is here, but it's still cold in New England. So now's the perfect time to head to America's Caribbean paradise, the United States Virgin Islands, consisting of St. Croix, St. Thomas, and St. John. The USVI was recently voted the top Caribbean destination by Travel and Leisure Magazine and several other top media organizations, as well as the best Caribbean islands to visit in 2023 by the Caribbean Journal. When you arrive, you'll enjoy some of the most pristine beaches in the world, incredible scuba diving and snorkeling, and world-class culinary offerings. Book your trip today and fall naturally in rhythm with the heartbeat of the islands, where the sun is strong, the clouds are few, and the weather is perfect every day. Travel from New England could not be easier, with no passport required, no money to exchange, and no travel restrictions to enter. Go to visitusvi.com and learn more about America's Caribbean paradise and book a trip today. That's visitusvi.com. My name is Dottie. This is my VA story. My father served in World War II. He was my hero. As he got older, he needed more help. VA New England Healthcare was there for him and our family every step of the way. VA New England Healthcare offers unlimited healthcare options. The best part? It never cost our family a single penny. As a veteran, my father deserved the best, and so does a veteran in your life. My name is Dottie, and I choose VA. For more information, call 1-844-VA-CARES or visit vacares.us. Leaving your primary home to your children to protect it from the nursing home can create huge capital gains tax issues if they sell it. Call Cushing and Dolan today at 866-848-5699 and get their new free guide called Real Estate, Who Owns It and How It's Protected. Keep your home away from your children's creditors and safe from the nursing home. Call 866-848-5699 or request it online at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Armstrong do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. Transferring real estate assets in retirement must be done carefully. If you choose to leave your primary home to your children to protect it from the nursing home, you need to be aware of the capital gains tax issues that exist if they sell it. Asset protection is one of the most important factors in your ability to enjoy your retirement years. So don't make snap decisions about how to manage your assets, because your financial well-being may depend on it. So call Cushing & Dolan today at 866-848-5699 and get their new free guide called Real Estate, Who Owns It and How It's Protected. There are many ways to deal with real estate that you own, and this guide can help you understand how to protect what is arguably your most valuable asset. Don't put your home at risk. Keep it away from your children's creditors and keep it safe from the nursing home. Call 866-848-5699. 
or you can request the guide online right now at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing & Dolan. Cushing & Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing & Armstrong do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. Missed one of our shows? Catch up anytime by asking your Alexa smart speaker to play the Financial Exchange. This is the Financial Exchange Radio Network. All right, let's pay off our trivia question today, which was, what is the name of the movie Andre the Giant starred in that was released in 1987? Of course, that was The Princess Bride. Anybody want to pin it? Yeah, yeah. There, there you go. The Princess Bride, which I still haven't seen, but uh, I got to make it a point to see that, I guess. Uh, Andre the Giant would play the character of Fezzik, a giant employed by the devious Vizzini. And our winner today was Steve from Seabrook, New Hampshire. He's taking home that Financial Exchange Show t-shirt and is also registered to win a $100 gift card to Encore Boston Harbor, which we'll give away on Friday's show. And trivia is brought to you by Encore Boston Harbor. Visit EncoreBostonHarbor.com and see for yourself why Encore is a Forbes five-star award winner for both hotel and spa. Let's talk a little bit about the current state of air travel and why people have turned into such big complainy pants. <laughs> From January 2022 through November of 22, travelers lodged 60,732 complaints with airlines. In 2019, the last... You know, full year before the pandemic, that January through November date. Are you looking for this piece, Brendan? Do you just make this up? No, I, it's Tucker put it right here. It's right ahead of the the Starbucks story. Okay, well I'll figure it out. <laughs> okay. Do you not have it seriously? No, I do not have it. All right, well let's not do it then. I'll I, I come up with something. Starbucks, go. <laughs> well, uh, poor Howard Schultz, who was once really kind of a darling in the democratic party he was like this progressive pioneer of uh corporate america he's going to be dragged in front of a committee here headed by bernie sanders to speak to why he is so anti-union and the things that he's doing to break the law what do you make of this uh, well it seems pretty severe to bring him in front of congress like this um if he's breaking the law, give him a fine. But do you really need to publicly humiliate him? Because that's what they're doing, right? They they offered to send someone else in his place uh, for this, uh, but they wouldn't accept it. They wanted him, and they were willing to uh, subpoena him to get him there. Uh, I think it's a little harsh. What do you make of with with a number of stores now? I, I don't know the exact number of stores. Uh, 300 coffee shops that have voted to join uh, Starbucks Workers United. It's about 3% of U.S. locations. Starbucks has not reached any collective bargaining agreement with the union at this point. Mm. What, what do you think is going on here? Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> what's going on is he doesn't want to talk with the unions, right? He's saying, no, I'm, I'm going to do it. So, yeah, he needs to step up and, you know, do what's right. Which is which is what? Where, where where do you think this needs to go effectively? Because so, so, here's what I'm seeing. All right, is the union push is continuing from these Starbucks stores. It's it's not just a trickle of one here, one there. Sure. It's you're seeing a continued push where yeah, it's three percent of U.S. stores now. Again, they got ten thousand of these things, which mm. it's a lot of stores, but it's not something that's going to simply go away. So I don't think Starbucks can simply ignore the problem and say. Well, maybe in a few years, this this won't be an issue anymore. Well, all right. So here's the thing about unions, right? Where do they gain their strength? They gain their strength through membership, right? And their ability right. to do what? To strike. Fine. If that's if if they want to strike, then they should strike. You know, if if they're being, you know, that beaten up by their corporate, you know, overlords, then they should strike. And it would seem to me that the real question on this is. Hey, what power does that union actually have? Right. right. So, I mean, should should I guess the question that comes to mind for me is, should the government be, you know, further empowering the unions 
beyond the power that they already have. Right. If, and that's what I don't I don't agree with that. I as think, you said, if if there are labor violations, labor law violations. Yeah. Address that. But you you address those labor law violations. But but dragging them in front of Congress to answer a bunch of questions like, hey, you know what? Everyone else is just getting slapped on the wrist and saying, here's a fine for doing what you did. It's going to be a lot of grandstanding, as it tends yeah. to be when you have people dragged in front of Congress rather than actually okay, is, is there some wrongdoing that's taking place, and here's what we're going to charge you with. Yeah, so, I mean, you know me, I've always said it, I'm a little bit of a capitalist, and, you know, let the capitalist system play its way out, and if, you know, they're being harmed, that's why they created the union, use that union power. Spring is here, but it's still cold in New England, so now's the perfect time to head to America's Caribbean paradise, the United States Virgin Islands, consisting of St. Croix, St. Thomas, and St. John. The USVI was recently voted a top Caribbean destination by Travel and Leisure magazine and several other top media organizations, as well as the best Caribbean islands to visit in 2023 by the Caribbean Journal. When you arrive, you'll enjoy some of the most pristine beaches in the world, incredible scuba diving and snorkeling, and world-class culinary offerings. Book your trip today and fall naturally in rhythm with the heartbeat of the islands, where the sun is strong, the clouds are few, and the weather is perfect every day. Travel from New England could not be easier, with no passport required, no money to exchange, and no travel restrictions to enter. Go to visitusvi.com and learn more about America's Caribbean paradise and book a trip today. That's visitusvi.com. Brendan, you ever get into the, the metaverse in a big way? In a big way, I've never got into it in a little way. I've not put any virtual reality goggles on, although I would, but they're just not prevalent in my circle. You ever spend, so you've never spent any time in Decentraland? Decentraland, I just learned of, and I've not hung out or even bought any property there. So the median sales price for land in Decentraland has declined almost 90% from a year ago, according to We Meta. Now, Decentraland is. One metaverse option that you can choose, I guess, when you go into when you, you know, put on your VR goggles and say, "Okay, this is where I want to go." It's it's one world that's been created by a company that allows individuals to to do what they want in there, and you've got all kinds of signs that, and and this was so predictable, <laughs> you think <laughs> that you know back in late 2021 when every company was like, "Yeah, we're gonna have you know a, a presence in the metaverse. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do that." This week, Disney shutting down its division that was helping develop metaverse strategies. Microsoft shut down a social VR platform that it bought back in 2017. You've got Zuckerberg continuing to make cuts uh, to, to jobs at Facebook, likely targeting uh, people in the metaverse. Not, not targeting them in the metaverse, but <laughs> getting rid of people who work on metaverse projects in the real world. I have to wonder, is it going to maintain that name, right? Because didn't Zuck basically coin metaverse? He didn't coin it, but he... He leaned into it as, hey, here's how we can rebrand ourselves. Okay. And here's, so on, on one level, I understand what Zuck is trying to do with this whole metaverse idea because the principle of it is, look, we had this great ad business on phones. Mm -hmm. And what happened to it? The people who made the hardware for phones changed the rules and now our ad business is threatened. Yeah. So Zuck says, hey, Great, I got to find what the next piece of hardware is and own it so that they can't change the rules on me. Mm. I'm going to make a bet that it's the metaverse. Few problems. The first is Zuck is now in his mid to late 30s, which means he doesn't know what's cool anymore. <laughs> and I'm sorry, but when it comes to social media, you look at every social media company that started and that becomes successful, it's run by people in their late teens and early 20s because... Right. They know what's cool to people in that same demo. Yeah. I am now too old to tell people what's cool. <laughs> I am the person who yells, get off my lawn, stop you know, doing that now. We all reach this point, and, and you hit it by like age 27. You are not able to tell people what's cool once you get to that point. I look at music videos now, and I'm like, I don't get it. Well, guess what? It's not targeted at me. <laughs> okay? So the first problem is Zuck doesn't know what's cool anymore because... He's too old, quite honestly. And the second issue, I mean, look, the only person who's ever been able to prove that they can still, you know, know what's cool later on is Mick Jagger. <laughs> All right? And that's just because he just doesn't care, like, whatever else. The other problem that he, he went through was 
rather than saying, okay, I'm, I'm going to you know ease into this, he oh, just started he spending $10 billion a big, year on something that yeah. wasn't working. But let's face it, there's other companies doing it too, right? But they're probably the same thing like you mentioned, Chuck. Older guys, they just jumping on the bandwagon, throwing a bunch of money. Microsoft, right? Throwing a bunch of money. Walt Disney, closing it down. So if you want to own the hardware piece and say, hey, this is where it's going to be in the future, it's really tough to do both that and the social media aspect of it. You know, the, the company, yeah. you don't have any company that makes a bunch of hardware that also has a good social media company. Remember yeah, when Google tried point. to make Google Plus? Uh, no. Is that what it was I, called? I don't even know what Google Plus is. So yeah, no. the social media thing. Oh, yeah, really? I, I can't even remember what it was called. It was something like that. Google I think Plus, it was, I think. Let me confirm, but I think it was Google Plus. We got to get rid of all the pluses, first of all. Right. I mean, it's just too just many stay of them. With the yeah, Google Plus. Yeah. So mm. the, the question that you do have for Zuckerberg now is, hey, if if the metaverse is not going to happen, you know, if, if you can't make metaverse happen, what do you what do you do with the What's name? The quite honestly, one, right? Because you can't you can't have the name of the company be your biggest <laughs> product failure ever. <laughs> Good point, Chuck. Coca-Cola did not rename itself New Coke. <laughs> so what do you do with the name? Well, maybe it just is a matter of time, and maybe it morphs into something a little bit different than today's vision. I mean, I was quite frankly shocked to hear that you can buy property in this Decentraland. And that oh, here's, yeah. here's the most shocking part. It was going for $45 Per square meter, like, I but what's think a it'd be square like, meter in the me in the metaverse? I assume it's kind of like the same thing as a regular square meter. But there's unlimited land. <laughs> well, that's a thing. So I would think forty five dollars would get you like ten acres. You know, you know what's uh, what's the restriction? Like, on I want a farm in the metaverse for forty five bucks. Then I, maybe I, I want I Mount Everest. It. I could climb that every day. Right. It'd be great. How much would you pay for Mount Everest in the metaverse if you could own it, and then you could let people hike it? That actually, you know what? That actually could have some money involved in that. If you die climbing Everest in the metaverse, do what happens really, to your body? Do they leave it up there? I, I don't know. I like the idea. Now I'm starting to grow on this metaverse thing. If you could do something like hiking Everest in the metaverse safely oh, on yeah, your that, couch. That's all the promise of it. Right? Yeah, That's actually pretty decent. I mean, the, the thing that I've always thought would be fantastic is, hey, you got the Masters coming up in two weeks, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, great. Here's your virtual seat at Amen Corner watching the Masters. But the technology, just, it's not, it's, it hasn't gotten there. No, no. But it, it hasn't but gotten it, there for the, VR. The and vision is it will. You know, right? what, you know what it feels like right now, though? MySpace. No, 3D TV. Remember all the buzz about that eight or nine years ago about how we're all going to have 3D TVs and this and that? Chuck, when I was a kid, we were sitting in front of the TV with... Well, you have the 3D goggles. Red and blue. Yeah, like, yeah you, you get the ones out of the Captain Crunch box, exactly. I know. So, yeah. yeah, it was rage. Let's, uh, let's take a quick break here. When we come back, we got Stack Roulette. Text us, 617-362-1385, with your comments and questions about today's show. This is the Financial Exchange Radio Network. Planning for your financial future never stops, but there are specific times of the year when it can matter more. Hi, this is Mike Armstrong from the Armstrong Advisory Group. We've put together a brand new guide called Financial Planning for Tax Time that may help you review certain tax decisions that you made last year and whether or not to adjust them in 2023. Taking a look at last year's IRA contributions might be a good place to start. Remember that if you're putting money into a traditional or Roth IRA, you have until April 18th to complete your contributions. The IRS limits for these contributions have also increased, which may give you the the ability to save more than you have in the past. Call us today at 800-393-4001 and request our new free guide called Financial Planning for Tax Time. That's 800-393-4001 or you can request it online at armstrongadvisory.com. The proceeding was paid for by Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor. Nothing in the ad or in any Armstrong guide is specific financial, legal, or tax advice. Consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong may contact you to offer investment advisory services. Spring is here, but it's still cold in New England, so now's the perfect time to head to America's Caribbean paradise, the United States Virgin Islands, consisting of St. Croix, St. Thomas, and St. John. 
The USVI was recently voted the top Caribbean destination by Travel and Leisure magazine and several other top media organizations, as well as the best Caribbean islands to visit in 2023 by the Caribbean Journal. When you arrive, you'll enjoy some of the most pristine beaches in the world, incredible scuba diving and snorkeling, and world-class culinary offerings. Book your trip today and fall naturally in rhythm with the heartbeat of the islands, where the sun is strong, the clouds are few, and the weather is perfect every day. Travel from New England could not be easier, with no passport required, no money to exchange, and no travel restrictions to enter. Go to visitusvi.com and learn more about America's Caribbean paradise and book a trip today. That's visitusvi.com. Evaluating how to smoothly pass along assets to your family is a huge part of a solid estate plan. Your home is most likely your primary asset, and if you think simply transferring it to your kids is the easiest way to go, you'd be taking a major risk, especially if they divorce in the future. Don't put yourself in an awkward position of having to buy back your own home just to protect it from creditors. Get Cushing & Dolan's brand new guide called Real Estate, Who Owns It and How It's Protected by calling 866-848-5699. There are better ways to own your real estate, and this guide will walk you through the process step by step, answer any questions you have, and put you in a more advantageous position to avoid probate down the road. Don't put your home at risk. Call today at 866-848-5699 and ask for your free guide, Real Estate, Who Owns It and How It's Protected. That's 866-848-5699, or you can request the guide online right now at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing & Dolan. Cushing & Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing & Armstrong do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. My name is Dottie. This is my VA story. My father served in World War II. He was my hero. As he got older, he needed more help. VA New England Healthcare was there for him and our family every step of the way. VA New England Healthcare offers unlimited healthcare options. The best part? It never cost our family a single penny. As a veteran, my father deserved the best, and so does a veteran in your life. My name is Dottie, and I choose VA. For more information, call 1-844-VA-CARES or visit vacares.us. For 40 years, Cancer Support Community has been a relentless ally for anyone impacted by cancer with free services provided online and in person with their newest location in Massachusetts. Connect with Cancer Support Community Massachusetts for free emotional support, educational resources, patient navigation, financial counseling, and more. 617-797-3391. CancerSupportMass.org. CancerSupportMass.org. Miss any of the show? You can catch up at your convenience by visiting FinancialExchangeShow.com and clicking the on-demand icon where you'll find all of our interviews and full shows. This is your home for the latest business and financial news in New England and around the country. This is the Financial Exchange Radio Network. This segment of the Financial Exchange is brought to you by Office Gallery International. They can help you design the perfect office space. Come visit their state-of-the-art showroom in Norwood where you'll find a wide variety of products that can help you envision a beautiful and productive workspace. Schedule your free consultation today at officegallery.net. That's officegallery.net. Office Gallery, creating workplace solutions that work. Mr. Hayes, what do you have for me for Stack Roulette? Well, kind of a big deal here out in the news today. Apple has rolled out a buy now, pay later plan. Ah, uh, Bumple. Bumple? Bumple. Oh, is that what they're uh, referred to? BNPL, a Bumple. Okay. Is that, That's what I call it. Apple's not going to call it Bumple, though, right? No. Could actually. Yeah, I could it's going to be called Apple like Pay Later. <laughs> right. Um, and, you know, basically, it's just Apple's way of further entrenching themselves in your life, right? Trying to kind of work through, you know, getting into your finances so that they can just continue to wrap their arms around you and, uh, yeah, I don't. I don't really know what's in it for them aside from that. Like, I, it's not as if they live off the float. Maybe the companies have to pay to participate. Well, I would imagine um, if you don't make your payment, then they start charging interest. Yeah, I guess that's what they're planning on, right? But you know, for that person who is kind of doing those payday loans, boy, this would be so much better, right? You have to link it to a debit card though, so you can't use your credit card. Those payments will happen. Uh, there'll be four payments over six weeks 
as you pay back up to that thousand dollars that they've lent you. So I think, you know, it's a good thing for the populace. Once again, for those folks that are more inclined to get those payday loans that had like 18 percent interest. Instead, it's going to be an interest free loan for them unless they don't pay it. Like you said, Chuck, there has to be a catch. There has to be. But, you know, if they're going to be. Yeah. I mean, what if they link to your your debit card and then you default, like at what point do does the interest accrue and how do they get it from you once you default? If there's one thing that I know about Apple, they don't do anything for free. They, they, there's there's got to be something here. It's got to be the 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 folks that are particip the 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 vendors that are participating in it. That's what I would expect, right? If you if I drive business your way cuz now someone can buy something, I want a little piece of that. That'd be my guess. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, there, there, there has to be something. I, I, again, I, I don't know where it is yet, but Apple's not lending you a thousand dollars out of the kindness of its heart. It'd be a lot Tim of Cook, money. That Tim Cook end likes a thousand dollars. He likes a lot of thousand dollars. He does. Uh, we talked either late last week or early this week about how you are, how we're heading towards lab-grown meat mm. being approved in the U.S. Yeah. Well. Here's the thing about lab-grown meat. It doesn't have to be meat from things that you would normally eat. Oh, that's a good point, right? You could have some so sort of... So don't get any ideas, Brennan. You can't make human meat, okay? Oh, now you're crossing the line. But there's a cultured meat firm that is trying to make a woolly mammoth meatball. Hmm. Okay. I, I, I just don't... Okay, first of all, they're using, woolly mammoth is not much different than an elephant, and Ex I don't really want to eat an elephant. Explain. It's, Please explain. It's Jurassic works. Park type stuff. They're using DNA. <laughs> Jurassic Park, but meatballs. Yeah, it, it's, <laughs> it's Jurassic Park, but to make meatballs instead of dinosaurs. How about a big steak? Well, here's the thing. A woolly mammoth steak. Just like Fred I'm, Flintstone. I'm sure they could do know, that. A big, big old but here's bone. But here's the thing about a steak is we know what a... A, a cow steak is, is, you know, in terms of texture and marbling mm. and that stuff. By doing it as a meatball, you don't have to worry about that because you just say, okay, it's ground mammoth, right? What, what's the texture of a mammoth steak? Well, here's the thing. Nobody even knows what the flavor of a mammoth steak. You could grind up a rabbit and tell That's people why it's they, mammoth. They're saying it's, hey, based on whatever the DNA, you know, says it is. Well, there's no way to validate it. I think if you ate an elephant and you compared it to the woolly mammoth, then you could know. Like, they're... Pretty similar animals. I mean, the only difference, I think, is a lot of long hair. I mean, size. that's a big difference. Well, you're not eating the hair. Think about just the changes between, you know, one type of cow to the other. You got a grass-fed cow versus, you know, a, a grain-fed cow. Even that just makes it taste you, different. Yeah. You think you could make a, you, you can tell the difference if we put them side by side? Oh, I would do that taste test. <laughs> I think this would be <laughs> a fun a one. Idea. I would puke. <laughs> From what? A woolly mammoth no, meatball. No, we were talking grass-fed no. versus grain-fed <laughs> oh, steak, oh, oh, Tucker. Oh, oh. Yeah, that, yeah, that would be fine. Let's take a quick break, and I'm <laughs> going to go get myself a good mammoth meatball right after this. <laughs> 